Okay, we're now ready to do one of these uh, hyperbola problems that involve completing the square. We need to have this in the proper form. We have to have uh, some kind of quantity squared with a, with a number on the bottom with a minus sign, another quantity squared with a number on the bottom equals one. We have to get it in that format. And we can't answer any of this until we actually first do the complete the square step. So that's the first thing we want to do here is complete the square. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for whatever square term is positive, that's the one that you're going to begin with. So I know I, I can start with either x or y here, but I want to start specifically with the one uh, that's positive. So I want to start with 16x squared, I'm going to put the x terms together. Then I have the 9y squared, so minus 9, 9y squared plus 90y. 353 is going to go across the equal sign there and become positive. So that's the, that's the beginning setup that we're going to do uh, for this one. Next, like we did before in the ellipses section, what you want to do is factor out just the number in front of the squared uh, term there. Uh, we're going to pull out just 16 only because we want to get a 1 in front of the x squared so that way we can do complete the square. 16, we have x squared. We're going to factor out a 16 and you get a minus 2x. We're going to leave a space there because eventually we're going to fill this in by doing the complete the square steps. Next, this next one we're going to pull out, we want to pull out a negative here because you want, again you want to get y squared to be positive. So I'm pulling out a minus 9. y squared now when I pull that out, I have positive 90 taken out a negative 9. That'll change this to a negative there. So you get negative 10y. Once again, I'm going to leave a space here. And I have 353 over here. Now I'm ready to do the complete the square steps. I'm going to take the number in front of the non-squared variable. That's negative 2 divided by 2. So here's step number 1 that we're doing down there. Step number 1 is that number divided by 2. And we get negative 1. Step number 2. You're going to take negative 1 squared, uh, and we get positive 1 there as a result. So divided by 2 and squared is always the steps you're going to do with complete the square. The 1 that we get here, we're going to add that 1 right inside there. When you bring it over on this side, like we did before with the ellipses, remember, you have to take the number you, you added inside the parentheses and multiply it by the number on the outside. So we're multiplying it by 16 there, so you get 1 times 16 you get as a result. So again, we're multiplying those together, the 1 times 16. You're going to do the same thing with this one. Step number 1, you take negative 10, the number in front of the non-squared variable, divided by 2. You're always doing that for step number 1. Divide by 2, you get negative 5. And then you're going to take negative 5 and square it, and you get positive 25. You're going to add the 25 inside here, and then over here, you're going to add 9 times 25 over there. Remember, again, the number you add here has to be added to the number on the outside. Now, this that I actually did here is a common mistake that I see most people making. They'll put a plus there. It's not plus. The reason why? That's not a plus in front of there. There's a minus sign. So actually, you're going to have a minus sign in, in, in front of there because you're really adding a negative. You're adding the opposite. So that should be a minus. So be really, really careful when you do these. This is where I see most people making the mistake is where they accidentally put a positive there. should be a negative because we've got a minus sign right there in front of it. So I want to make sure you understand that. It's got to be a, you're adding a negative 9 times 25 there. So be careful on that. Okay, now that we have that complete, we're ready now to uh, turn this into quantity squares here. So we got an x quantity squared, we have a minus 9, and you have a y quantity squared. The number that goes inside each of the blanks is the answer you get for step 1 of each of these here. So you're going to get a minus 1, and this is going to be a minus 5. You're going to be using the answer you got for step number 1 for each case there. Over here, if you add all this together, 353 plus 16 minus 9 times 25, then you're going to get 144 as a result. The last thing you want to do now is divide everything by 144 because you want to get it into the proper form. So we're going to do that and then we're going to reduce the fractions. So when you do that you're going to get x minus 1 squared that's going to be over 9. You have a minus and then you, this one when you reduce the 9 over 44 you're going to get y minus 5 squared 
that's going to be over 16, that equals 1. So now this right here is going to be the actual equation that we're going to work with to answer the rest of these questions over here. So we can't answer any of these until we have it written in the proper form. So now let's take a look at that next. Okay, so now we have it in the right form. We're ready to answer these questions. First, let's take a look at the center. Center is going to be opposite sign of what you see inside there. So in this case, it's going to be positive 1 and positive 5. That's your center. We got that directly from the form itself. Now in order to answer these down here, we have to know the A, B, and C values. So let's go ahead and find those. Now A is always what comes first. Whatever the first fraction is, the fraction that's positive, the one in front of the minus, whatever one that is, automatically that's where your A value comes from. Okay, so A is going to be 3, B is going to be 4, based on that, square root of each of these. We've got to find the C value. C value is the square root of A squared plus B squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared here. Okay, when we do that, your what you get is 9 plus 16, 25. Your C is equal to 5. Okay, now that we have this complete, we're ready to answer uh, these parts. Asymptotes. Okay, now asymptotes, we have to know which direction it opens up. This one is another one that opens up sideways because the X comes first there. Okay, it opens up sideways. So because of that, we need to use this version of the asymptote formula, it's y minus k, so we're going to do y minus 5. If it opens up sideways, you're using b over a as a slope, plus or minus b over a. So plus or minus 4 thirds x minus h, x minus 1. So we have, we have all this. That's going to be the equation for your uh, asymptotes. That's a formula again from the notes. So again, you refer back to the notes again, that's exactly what I used uh, here in this case. Okay. Your eccentricity, your E, is C over A. All right, now in this case, we actually don't have a uh, uh, square root anymore. We just have an actual uh, fraction. So we have uh, 5 thirds, and that's going to be about 1.7 approximately. That's going to be your eccentricity there. So 1.6, 1.7, somewhere around there, that's going to be your eccentricity. Transverse, 2 times A. 2 times 3 is 6. Conjugate 2 times b, 2 times 4 equals uh, 8. Okay, so we have uh, both of those. Here's another case again where the b happens to be larger than the a, and that's why, again, you have transverse and conjugate. Tran conjugate's going to be the larger one there. Okay, so now we have that complete. We're ready now to draw the graph and to get the vertices and the foci. We're going to get those directly off of the graph itself. Start with the center. We're going to go 1. 1, 5 is right here. We need to go to the left and the right with our A value because that's the direction we have the X that comes first, it opens up left and right. So from here, I'm going to go three places to the left. So I have one, two, three is going to be this dot right here. And we have three places that go to the right over there on that side. These right here are going to be your vertices. Vertices are always where you go with the A value. So if we go that direction, okay, your vertices are going to be I will just read those directly off of here. Negative 2, positive 5, negative 2, 5, and then we have 4, 5. So 4, 5 is uh, that one there. Okay, now once we have that complete, uh, we now want to form the whole box so we can actually draw the graph itself. So from this point, we have to go up and down with the, the 4, okay? Uh, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the top of the box here. We go down 4, that's the bottom of the box. And then we have dotted lines that go for each there. So we've got the dotted line that runs across the top and bottom, that forms your top and bottom of the box. And then we're going to form our diagonals. Our diagonals are going to connect the boxes and we need to make those again so that way we know how wide the parabola is. Okay, that's what determines that is these asymptotes right here. These are a slant or these uh, oblique asymptotes there. The graph is going to touch the sides of the box right here where your vertices are. That's an actual point on the graph itself. So the graph is going to follow the dotted line. It's going to hit that dot, follow the other dotted line down that way. This one's going to follow this dotted line. You'll hit the dot, it'll curve, and it'll go through and do that. So here is our basically what the graph looks like. The foci is 5 that we had last time, our C value was 5. 
we're going to add that in each direction here. So from the center, from this point right here, we're going to add five this way. So I'm going to actually count that over. It's three to the edge of the box, and there's going to be two more. So that'll put us outside the box right here inside of the curve there. From this point, I'm going to go five in the other direction. So again, I have one, two, three to here. I have two more. It's going to put me uh, right there. So I'm just going to. So these, I can actually read the coordinates off the graph itself. Unlike the square root ones, usually you can't get an actual coordinate, you're just going to do a, a coordinate plus or minus the square root. We want to actually write the coordinates out. So in this case, uh, if you can work that whole thing out by adding, like for instance, if you have, uh, here we have a 1 plus or minus 5, you actually want to complete that and write the actual x coordinate instead of writing it as a plus or minus format. Let's read it off of here. You have 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4, 5. Negative 4, 5 is that one. And this one over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we have 6 and 5 over there. So 6 comma 5 would be the, the foci. So in this case, we end up getting an, uh, actual points for the foci instead of the square roots. Um, so that definitely is possible for questions like this. So this completes the problem.